My name is Eric Wielander. Welcome back to my channel. So maybe you've used the Shortcuts app to run automations on some of your Apple devices, but did you know you can actually give your smart home a variety of shortcuts as well with Apple's Home app? So that's what I want to get into today. Now, last week I made a video all about different things that I find useful in my smart home day in and day out. And one of those items I mentioned was a button that I have under a table in the area where we watch TV and I can use it to quickly toggle the light. Now, the way I'm getting that to work nicely is with a shortcut. And this applies whether you're trying to automate something like a smart button or a contact sensor, a motion sensor, any other kind of things that would trigger an automation in Apple's home app. All right, so here I am in the basement room of my home app and I have this flick button here, but that could be any number of other sensors or buttons. And if I tap on the accessory details, you'll see that like a lot of buttons in HomeKit, you have the options for single press, double press, and long press as things that can trigger actions. And under single press, I already have something where it runs a shortcut now, let me show you how I get to that if I don't have that set up already. So double press, I have nothing configured right now. So we'll just start there. And this would be the same for single press or long press, whichever one you're trying to configure. Now, this is the screen that the Home app shows you when it wants to know what scene or accessories you wanna control based on an automation. So a contact sensor opens, a motion sensor detects motion, whatever kind of event you're trying to trigger off of, then it's gonna to wanna to know, well, what do you want the Home to to do. And if you keep scrolling to the bottom of this list, you'll see there's an option that says convert to shortcut. And what this does is it means that when that automation's triggered, instead of running a scene or setting an accessory to a particular value, it's going to just run this shortcut. And it starts you off with one action for setting a value in your smart home. So you can tap on that and you'll see the list of scenes, basically the same screen we just saw, except of course, you can't nest shortcuts inside of shortcuts here. So it's not gonna give you that option at the bottom of the screen. But then you can also pull up all kinds of other actions. Now today, I'm gonna focus on what you can do with the Home app. So some of the stuff I find very helpful here is getting the state of your home. So I could get the accessory state, and of course, I just like shortcuts you know, go to the action and then drag it out here. Another thing that's very helpful is the if condition. So you can get the accessory state. So let's say in this case, we wanna see if the basement lights are already on. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull up the basement here. And let's just say if the main lights are on. Now, of course, if I wanted to select the sofa lights, which are dimmable, then I have multiple values. I could get the name of those lights, which wouldn't make sense for a lot of automations, but I could also get the power state like we could with the regular lights or the brightness level. So in this case, I'm gonna just automate off of the power state. So then I tap on if input. So I'm gonna choose if the power state of these lights is on, then we're gonna go ahead and set a scene a particular way. So. Let's go down here to the basement and I have, um, I'm gonna just set, let's say all these lights off. So if the lights are on, I'm gonna go ahead and set these three accessories, these three lights to off. But otherwise, if the lights are off and I've double tapped the button, then what I wanna do is set the values to on. So I'm gonna go here to the basement again and select those three lights, hit next and turn them on. So this way, if I double tap the button and the lights are on, it will turn them off. If I double tap the button and the lights are off, it will turn them on. Now, a lot of times for me with shortcuts in the shortcuts app or in the home app, I find that the simpler ones are the ones I often use the most and keep the longest. So this is obviously a very simple shortcut, but it can be very useful. And let me show you how I actually have it set up. If I go here, this is my actual shortcut for single press. So if the sofa light power state is on, that means if the lights over my sofa where I'm watching TV are on, then I'll turn on my scene called basement off. 
Otherwise, I turn on my scene called basement lights dim. Now, this gets into another tip I have for automations in general where HomeKit really likes it in certain cases if you have scenes for your automation. In fact, a lot of third-party apps will sort of force you to create scenes for your automations. And I think it's a good idea regardless of what the Home app or HomeKit wants, just because if you happen to change your lights in a particular room, then you can just add or remove those lights or whatever other accessories from particular scenes. And then any automations all automatically get those updates because they're controlling the scene, not necessarily individual accessories. Of course, there's some cases where you just wanna turn on one lamp and then whatever, just control that one lamp. But as you start to get more lights and more other stuff in your smart home, it can be nice to group those things together in scenes. And so practically speaking, what this button then does for me is when we're ready to watch a movie or something, no matter what the lights are set to in terms of a brightness value, if I hit that button, it'll turn all the lights off because we wanna go watch TV. But at the same time, if the lights are already off, which is probably the case if we are watching TV, then it turns the lights to dim. So we can get up and go upstairs and get some snacks or whatever, but we're not gonna be blinded by super bright light. And well, these shortcuts are kind of buried in the home app, I find it to be a great way to set up some of these automations right in the home app without having to use third-party HomeKit apps to control those particular automations. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. Thanks again so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.